Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So today I'm going out to talk about what it's really like to study philosophy at university. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Katie. I'm a first year English literature and philosophy student and I'm just finishing, I'm just finishing this year now. I've got three exams um, the week after next and then I'll be done with first year. Today I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about philosophy if you're planning on doing it at uni and you want to know a little bit more about kind of what goes on in an undergrad philosophy environment. So please keep watching and don't forget to subscribe if you do want to watch more philosophy themed videos. So I'm just going to go through the structure of philosophy first. So I know a lot of people like how many lectures, seminars you get a week. So I do our philosophy course because I'm joint honours. So I have three hours of lectures a week, one for each of my individual modules, then one hour for each of those modules every other week for seminars. So in a week I either have five or four seminars. No, hours five or four hours, which really isn't a lot. However, I was like, oh, philosophy. There's not gonna be any books in that. Got here, got given these. As you can see, very big. Got lots of philosophy articles in that you have to read. So philosophy is quite a text heavy subject once you get into it. Anyway, at my uni, we had three modules this year, as I said. Had one called Mind, Thought and Reality another called moral and political and another called critical thinking. So critical thinking is the main basis of philosophy and this is the stuff that I hadn't learned before. So this was all about how to write philosophy arguments, how to present them in a logical way and then also what different kinds of arguments are called and how you see whether they're valid or not. So for example, there's two types of logic and that is categorical and propositional. So categorical is, for example, let's find an example. Categorical logic is something along the lines of everything that green, everything that is green is also spiky. All plants are green, therefore all plants are spiky. We've got categories. Something is green, something is spiky, and something is a plant. And then propositional logic is more like Theresa May is Prime Minister and Donald Trump is president. So it's like propositions, which can either be true or false. So that one was actually a really, really helpful and quite interesting module to kind of learn how to present my philosophy arguments best in my essays. And yes, philosophy is an essay based subject. So I had three mini essays in critical thinking and then two, one big essay for both my thoughts and reality and moral and political and then I have an exam for every single one. So to kind of give you ideas of what kind of things we learn, moral and political was a lot of stuff that we did at A level. We kind of went from you know abortion, euthanasia to, to just war, that kind of thing and then one thing I didn't think about was that it said political and yes just war is political but we actually did look at conservatism which I didn't think I'd be learning any actual politics in philosophy at all so that one took me back a little bit and I was like I really don't want to be learning this but okay so that is one thing to bear in mind. I also think that moral and political had things like utilitarianism as well in it so that was a very I sat in a lot of those lectures and thought I learned this at A level so that's one thing to bear in mind is that philosophy is a degree that you don't have to have done it at A level to be able to take so they are do do a lot of catching up so to say in first year for people that haven't taken it before which obviously is good but if you did do a level then yeah there's gonna be a lot of repetition of stuff you already know but just in a tiny little bit more depth and then my thought and reality was an interesting one so we started the year off thinking about whether animals had similar belief systems to us or whether they were different, which is quite an interesting topic. Then we thought about artificial intelligence, do computers really have minds, that kind of thing, which again is quite interesting. Another one that I'd never thought of was, are pains actually unpleasant or is it just like a connotation? Like what actually is it? So yeah, and then our last ever lecture on this was are llamas real? So you do like a massive range of stuff in philosophy and quite a lot of the time I would walk out those lectures going what on earth did I just spend the last hour listening to? Like it gets kind of strange but also that's kind of the fun part of philosophy is that you learn about such a wide range of things. 
Okay, then I looked up on the internet like some things that people had asked about studying their like philosophy at uni. So this person has asked like what topics would be would likely to be covered, so that's the stuff that I've just said. What skills would be developed? Skills is definitely in our critical thinking, is all about essay writing and actually really tightening up your essays. As I said, we did three mini essays, they were 400 words each, and for example, two of them, one of them I wrote on social media and it's whether it was a negative or positive impact on society and I probably could have written a whole dissertation on that but I had to cut it down to 400 words, you really have to think about which your best arguments are, which ones you should put forward and how concisely you can say them in the most simple manner. So that's basically the skills you learn and also like analytical skills as well, like are arguments valid and stuff. What things people liked and disliked about studying philosophy? I really like the like wide range of topics we cover in philosophy. I find thinking, especially about the morality stuff and ethical stuff, I find it really fascinating. I really, really like ethics. So all of the, we did all of the ethical stuff at the beginning of the year, so as I said, we did abortion, euthanasia, death penalty, all of that kind of thing, I find really, really interesting. So I really enjoyed that. Disliked the political stuff, as I said, I didn't really want to learn about conservative conservatism. Some of the stuff in mind thought in reality I thought was a little bit odd and not necessarily useful but overall I've pretty much enjoyed philosophy. I also liked how we didn't have a seminar for it every single week because that was like a little bit too much. For the seminars that's what these big books are for so we'd basically every other week we'd be given an article to read and then we'd have to read it and some of these articles can be like really long which is why we have limited contact hours because you've got a lot of studying to do on your own you have to read these things and come up with thoughts and then in the seminars you sit with a small group of people I think it was meant to be about 10 people but normally only like four or five people showed up and you'd discuss the article that you'd read um, whereas lectures are the whole of philosophy which is about 100 people just sat listening to a lecturer. How different is it from studying philosophy on your own? I have never studied philosophy on my own purely because my school offered it from we did quite a philosophy based religious studies course at GCSE and my A level was philosophy and ethics so I've never studied it on my own but I'd say it's quite similar studying it A level except that if you want more support you have to go and find it in office hours rather than going up to your teacher at the end of the, le uh, end of the lecture, end of the lesson. Yeah this person's asked is it the same kind of stuff that you do in religious studies A level? I did religious studies, philosophy and ethics so yeah it's basically the same stuff that I did but a lot extra because obviously you're not studying, well I study another subject but you're not studying like two other subjects at the same time. What kind of workload is it? Personally I thought that the workload wasn't that much this year apart from those articles to read and then the essays. We honestly didn't have that many essays to do overall. As I said there was three mini ones and two big ones. That was five essays in total over the whole year so it really wasn't a lot of essays. The workload isn't massive. I'm sure we'll get more next year but this year it really isn't. What exactly can you do with a philosophy degree? Anything, really, except being anything that requires you to be analytical, good writing skills, like as long as you're not trying to be a doctor or a scientist. You can do any, any humanities based. Philosophy's like a really employable degree. There's a lot of different things you can go into with it afterwards. So that's most things I can think of um, to answer about studying philosophy but definitely if you are thinking of studying philosophy do let me know in the comments down below or um, I'll have my Twitter and Instagram linked down below or if you want to find it yourself it's katie underscore may07 please feel free to contact me in any of those three methods to ask me any questions that you have in particular about learning philosophy at uni or just uni life in general if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to like it as well and I will see you in my next one